Welcome everyone to the Meds by Accelerator podcast brought to you by Everwell Marketing, the go-to resource so you can get the latest hacks and best practices to market and grow a profitable medical aesthetics practice. My name is Maripili and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing, operations, numbers, and helping you grow and take your med spa to the next level. This is the Med Spa Solar Podcast, Season 2. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode. I'm excited because we're going to be starting a new series on the elements of a perfect consultation. This is a very special secret training that I did for my clients with Emily from Jack's Schoolroom, whom we've been working with since before they opened their practice. If you've been struggling with your sales process, then you're going to want to listen to this whole series because this is the exact process that they implemented to become the number one provider in their state in less than three years. And it'll help you fast track your results. In the final installment of this coaching call session with Coolroom, we'll discuss the final details of a successful consultation with a prospective patient. When attempting to close out that consultation with a sale, never underestimate the power of the little details. Things like personalized quotes, walking the patient through the treatment process, and offering financing options, if available, can really win a patient's trust and convince them to purchase from you. Let's dive in. Um, I know that um, we had this one client, and I don't think they ever like we ever finished it, but I thought it was really funny and cute that they actually made a, a pamphlet that said like uh, questions my husband my husband might have, and so they wanted to make it like funny and cute. Where like some of the co- like the first question was like, okay, so how much is this gonna cost me? Um, mm-hmm. So I thought that w- that was like a really creative idea of going about it, just like a specifically for that scenario. It might not happen for everybody, but um, if if that were to happen like just giving them that i think it was like really you know like something extra and that went along really well with their brand yeah, i love that i love that um Awesome. So um, I think those were like really good elements to make sure that you have as perfect a consultation as you can have. As we discussed, there's not going to be such a thing because it's different for every every time. Uh, you're also like mental state might be different. It might be rainy outside. You just don't feel your best self. Um, so I feel like we there should be another uh, topic where we talk about like, how do you, you know, and help whenever you might not be feeling your best or, uh, you know, we all have stuff that we're dealing with. And when we show up at work, it might not be our a hundred percent all the time, but we want to make sure to get there. So um, just some quick solutions here and there that we can talk about for another mm-hmm. time. Definitely. I know I could talk about this topic for three days. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. Um, anything else that I'm missing here? We went through, you know, the prepping, the actual consult and the after, like, what are some of the things that we should consider, uh, right before they leave, um, the consult. So. Um, the only other thing I would say is kind of how we do it is that, um, once we've had the consultation with them and done the assessments and a- answered questions, we, um, and I know it may differ for every practice, but we actually step out to get their quote, get ready or whatever. Um, it gives them a chance to change back into their normal clothes, um, and just kind of get comfortable and settled and kind of gives them a second also to think of any questions they may have that they didn't think of when put on the spot. And then we, it gives us a chance to actually like get them a very personalized quote, um, for those services that we've talked about. And then we come in, um, back in and we go over it item by item with them instead of just like handing them something and saying like, let me know what you want to do, or just handing them and having them leave. Um, it's important to kind of go through each item with them and show them like what each package would be and all of that so that they have an idea of like, okay, what, what can I, what, what is my preference? And like, how much is it going to take to get me there kind of a thing and show them their options. Um, and then once we've gone over that is when we kind of give them all the information, the pe- the packet and stuff and sit there with them for a little while and just say like, do you have any questions about any of that? And it gives them a chance to think about if they just want to go ahead and book right now. And we, we always say again, cause we're not, we don't pressure, but of course we ideally want them to book right then. Um, so we will say like, if so, just so too, they know they have the option. Like if you see any of those that you just know you want to do, I can go ahead and get you scheduled for it. Um, or if you need to take time to think about it, um, you can always let us know, you know, and let them know how long the quote will be good for, um, just to give them some sort of like timeline as well. Like I need to get back to them by a certain time or date. 
Um, and then that's when we kind of say our goodbyes and let them know if they have any questions. And it, of course, if they book, we go ahead and schedule them and do deposit and stuff. Nice. Do, do, um, do you guys do like, um, say like somebody is interested, but they're like, I would want to know if I um, qualify for any financing. Do you do it with them there? Yeah. So we, we don't make them if they're not comfortable doing that, but we say like, oh, okay, like I can grab our iPad and we can do that right right now if you want, just so you don't have to like do it later. Um, and a lot of times they opt to go ahead and do it. And then I know with, um, with the cherry that we just uh, financing that we just added on, you can actually pre do it like pre before their appointment, which is great. Yes. That's awesome. Um, to, to get them to go ahead and book as we will without being pushy and like pressuring. Right. I feel like for, for me, like, uh, what I feel really comfortable with is knowing that I'm making it as easy as possible for them. Right. Like if they reached out, they already came all this way. They want to know the options. And I think another really key element is like what happens after the console, right? Like what are the steps to follow if they said no? And then if they said yes, or they are really considering it. So I think like just offering to do the financing with them right there is just easy because sometimes you like you said, you forget, um, you might not have time to actually be in the computer and your phone might be too small um, or you just want somebody to guide you. Right. So, yeah, we just kind of phrase it as like, oh, you can do it right now. And that way, if you have any questions, I can help you like while you're doing it, because then like they go home to do it and then a they forget to do it or B, they like just get busy or they're like, I don't have any like or they get confused about it. And then that's a barrier to them, you know, getting in. Yes. Yes. I love, that. I love that. Like just making it as easy so that I would say like, that's kind of how we approach things is like a mm -hmm. serving people really well, um, having strategy or having processes in place that, um, like you make sure you follow up with them, but then also just making things easy for them instead of, again, that's going along with serving them well, like making it the overall experience great for them. Instead of being like, you need to buy right now. You obviously just want to remove any barriers you can to them getting the service. Um, and then that way it, it helps without having to be like, don't talk to your husband. <laughs> you don't need yeah. to talk to him. It's you fine. <laughs> He's going to support you no matter what. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure he would say yes. Like, I don't know your husband. I do not know what he would say. So I'm not going to get in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. I get you. Um, uh, so yeah, I think, yeah, prepping and something that Elsa that has really helped me is like, I, I was going to, sorry, three thoughts in there. And I just kind of like try to tell them all at the same time. Something that really helps me is like prepping whether they're going to say no or yes and be super ready for it. Um, and I was going to ask, how often has it been that um, they said yes in that first consultation versus thinking about it and telling you later? I would say it's more for us, it's more common for people to think about it and tell us later. So I'd say probably like 30% of the time they go ahead and do it right there, maybe 30 to 40. Um, but then the rest of it, a lot, we have so many people that like will, um, and I do think it's too, cause they feel confident and they feel like they, you know, we're the experts, but they really do just want a second to think about it. Like I know the ideal in a sales perspective is obviously that they go ahead and do it right then. Um, but it's not everybody's personality. And a lot of people feel more comfortable, like waiting a second, thinking about it and doing it. Um, and we definitely never want to push something onto somebody so that they end up regretting it later because a, that just causes a mess of like trying to get them trying to get refunds when you don't refund or like, um, just not being happy, like with the overall thing, cause they feel like they're pressured into it. But, um, but yeah, I would say I like, totally forgot the original question, but I think I answered it in like 40%. A lot of people come like a day later or next day will say like, all right, I'm ready to book. And we make sure like to follow up with them as well. So that if they, if they are wanting to it puts it on their mind. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 No, you answered the question. Like how often uh, do they say yes right there and then versus waiting for it? Um, and so, yeah, I think like being ready for both, you know, like whether they are going to say yes right there and then whether they're going to say, or yeah. actually time, right. Or whether they're going to think about it or whether they might not be ready, but what would that conversation look like later? Just staying top of mind. I love the idea of like making sure that they take something home with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. So I think we went through pretty much everything. Um, uh, I love this. I'm, uh, I think this is one to have like a little downloadable almost for it. Just like a quick checklist of, uh, some of these elements, um, 
just so, you know, whoever wants to like print it out, can I have it there? Maybe there are some elements in there that they're not currently doing, or they could do a little bit more of keep in mind that it actually makes a difference at the end of the day to, for the overall customer journey, right. And that experience that you want to deliver at the end of the day. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, Emily. It was as always a pleasure and I learned a lot. <laughs> I'm always learning during these calls. <laughs> hey, I love them. I feel like I learned stuff too. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so, so much. I'll see you then next week. Sounds good. Have a good week. Bye. You too. Say hi to my